NBC the seventh today? That is the question that Mike, myself, Gary, and all of these fans have. Can that man right there, Antron Brown, do what Gordon McClendon did back in 1997? Very privileged to have both of you guys join us this morning on NHRA Race Day. And Antron, let's talk with you. What does this moment represent to you, knowing that so few people have done this? It's huge. I mean, it's almost a championship inside itself. And when you do, when you do it, you did a statement and. Uh, Corey Max done it before, and uh, hopefully he can rub me this special mojo sauce that I need out there to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, but you know, Corey, you did it in 97. I keep looking at that graphic, and every time I see it, you're the only one that didn't win the championship after you swept the swing. How much does that mean to you? It means a lot. Oh, uh, come on. I want to hear it. Who are you giving crap to, Corey yeah. or Mike? That's the yeah. question. <laughs> Being the bridesmaid four times. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for reminding me. Uh, it's one of those deals where, you know what, it, it, the swing was awesome to win, and then but that finished in second and not being able to take the championship home, that's a big Sonoma deal. Here. 97 yep. Sonoma against Scott Coletta. I'll tell you, that weekend sticks out of my mind because we were running Nick and Scott, Nick and Nick, every single race, beating him, and we got to the final there, and he thought, we're going to load one on you. And I'll tell you, we loaded it up, and we knocked him down. And I thought from there on, we're going to win. The, I'm finally going to win my first championship, and it just didn't happen. A guy got taken out again the last wow. minute. And it's one of those things that comes down to it. You want to win it so bad. You want it so bad. And all of a sudden, you got those competitors that are so good, like Antron, that come up now. And now I'm watching Antron going through the ranks. I'm thinking, okay, you know, he was my teammate made for a year. Yeah. Now I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Antron, I want to take you back just one week ago, Seattle, and show you this top fuel final you had with Tony Schumacher. The reason you're, when, when you look back at this, what goes through your mind when you win the second race of the Western Swing? It, it was just incredible. I mean, that was just a sensational race. It was a, it was a close race. And, uh, you know, when you, when you win a race by eight thousandths of a second over 300 miles an hour, Mike and Corey will tell you, I mean, it's just unbelievable. It could go either way. And uh, to be on the other end of it, and uh, we didn't qualify so great out there, but we just took it one round at a time, and uh, that really set the stage because I, it showed me that my team can endure different situations. And we qualified bad, but we stayed strong, and we just took it one round at a time, and we squeaked that win out. And uh, out here is going to be the same deal. It's going to be tough again, and we're just going to try to take it one round at a time. You know, cliches are cliches normally because they're true, and you're supposed to be having a sophomore slump. Right? Oh no. Take a look at the points. In addition to being able to sweep the Western Swing, the largest point lead in any professional category. You've got your spot in the countdown to one. So, what else is there to do besides go out and win today? Well, you got to take it one at a time, so like we always talk about, because you can't count anybody out. I mean, you can have a 200 point spring by anybody. Look at Funny Car, and I mean, you got Corey's car doing very well, the Fram car, they're rolling. Tyler Kahar's doing great, and uh, Larry Dixon, Schumacher, we're all together up there. So, and Bernstein and Corey. So, uh, man, you just got to keep on doing what you do. You lose one round, and them guys win a race, there's 60, 80 points out the door right there. Yeah, Corey, your focus has to be on moving up just a little bit. Sixth, you're looking pretty good, but you want to be a little higher, I'm sure. I want to be in that top five come Indy. I mean, that's a big deal for us. And obviously, being at a Fram race, this would be a great place to start. Yeah, yes, it would. Well, what do you say right now? We can talk to a fan, have a fan <laughs> ask a question. Let's find out. Where, where's, let's look out in this massive crowd. Let's find Gabe Harlan. He's from Sunnyville, California. Hey, there he is. You got a question for Antron. Fire away. Hey, Antron. <laughs> hey, Antron. What does your grandma think of her newfound fame? Oh, yeah, Grandma Brown. Yeah, Everybody Grandma Brown. Everybody loves Grandma Brown. Let me tell you something. Uh, old Grandma's back in J Jersey right now. She called me early this morning because it's three hours difference from here to there, and she told me I better be on my game. So she's enjoying her fame a lot. She's going back home. All of her friends, all of my aunts and uncles, they come over to ask her for her autograph. It's like uh -huh. I go to the family dinner. It's like I'm second rate now. You know, I hear Grandma Brown will be back around Reading, so she might be making another TV appearance very, very soon. <laughs> Corey and Antron, stick around with us for our last segment. We're going to step away. The 1997 Western Swing winner, Corey McLenathan, the guy who's trying to do it this year, Antron Brown. And we've got a little bit more about the Western Swing, at least when it comes to numbers, courtesy of Stack Guy. Good morning, Lewis. Good morning once again, Dave Reef, Mike Dunn, everybody. This is the 16th time a driver's won the first two races on the Western Swing. In the prior 15 times, the driver's pulled off the sweep. 40% of the time. Uh -huh. I like those odds. And remember the 94 swing when three drivers had a chance to pull it off at the same race. So what Statman is telling me, Antron, is you got about a 40% chance today. How does that number sit with you? 
This is fine. I mean, if you go in the race and you got 40% chance, because half the time you got you got an like 80% chance to lose first round. Yeah. So uh, just gotta go out here. I mean, it's nerve wracking. You got all this in the back of your mind, and you just gotta stay poised. And uh, I'm just gonna block it all out in my mind. Just do what we do. Well. Should you go on and win today, we, we're going to have something for we, We've got it all prepared. <laughs> Corey, you Don't can actually touch that. Corey, <laughs> you can hold that. You've swept the swing. You can hold that. But Antron, That's yeah. it. what do you think of that? I, I hey, I tell, you, I tell you one thing, man. It's like the thing that my grandma used to ride around on. <laughs> oh! Things just got a little dicey. Wasn't me. Wasn't me, Grandma. <laughs> Let's quickly talk about a matchup to watch in Top Fuel, Mike. A great one there as well. That doesn't involve Antron. Uh -huh. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Top Fuel's really stacked. But, Matt, right out of the box, Tony Schumacher and Brandon Bernstein, you're not going to want to miss that for a second week in a row. Let's get the sweep chant going. Sweet, oh, yeah. sweet, yeah. sweet. Yeah. Antron, good luck to you. Corey, you. good luck to you. Congratulations you. on your sweep. Right. we got to step away, but don't forget, <laughs> 9.30 tonight's the time you got to come back. More drag racing coming up next. It's a Lucas Oil drag racing series. Come on, see